Firex in Carnon Genesis. So we are going to talk quite a bit about this, starting with the Incarnate perks. First, we have the Incarnate mode, melee damage, sprint speed, bullet jump. I think it's 25%, slightly higher than the usual 20% that we get. I might be wrong here, but I think that's how it is. Uh, and so we have one less passive. I think most of them have four, or I might be wrong, but pretty decent stats for the uh, for this one. Then we get two. Surrounded by enemies, pretty much increases our attack speed up to 50%. Super nice. Only melee weapon equipped. Probably not not gonna happen very often, so I don't go with this. This is good on normal situations if you ever want to make a stat stick with this. Uh, it's going to reset and going to F everything up. Heavy attack efficiency. If it would, if this would be like 30% or something more workable to go with a Riven. Let's say you get a little bit with a Riven and then this passive to make you not use Reflex Coil. Then it would be better, but I just don't think it, uh, I would take this range. I usually don't go over to range, but it sounds like the best option here. Last but not least, status chance by 14%, which would increase to pretty much 29%, almost 30%. Would give us with uh, whipping wounds almost two guaranteed stacks, uh, stats procs per hit which would be really nice but consider that we have mainly impact we would have to rely on our elementals or modded elementals so that isn't really the best thing critical damage to four times on slide attacks eh? Eh? what the f where we said chance to bleed on impact status effects. Pretty much like the Magistar. I'm going with this. Back on the simulacrum, I gotta tell you, probably gonna take a while this video. If you wanna leave it in the background, go ahead. So, perks. Uh, the incarnate form. Heavy slam creates field of fire. Get your hopes down. This sucks. It's a piece of crap. The sprint speed and the bullet jump are super nice. The melee damage is nice. The weapon itself is really good. But the ah, the field of fire could be so amazing. But it sucks so much. We're gonna get into that later. This one, attack speed, interesting. Range, okay. Chance of bleed on impact. And the stats are pretty decent for the Furex rate. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys something. You guys remember the Tackle Prime? Yeah. It's kind of what you're thinking about. They, with that perk, they kind of turn the Furex, or any of the Furex or the Furex Wraith, into the Tackle Prime. But a bit better. I'm gonna show you guys why in a bit. We don't have the slash, but we have the slash on the impact box. So, that slash on impact box is more than it looks like. It's not only on the... It, it works just like a hemorrhage or an internal bleeding for primary and secondary. It's gonna work with the first impact procs from your stances. Our stances are Gaia's Tragedy, Seismic Palm, and Fracturing Wind. I'm a bit suspicious to talk about this, but I think Fracturing Wind would actually be the one stance which would allow you, if you use Relentless Combination, to generate the highest amount of combo fastest. But the, I think I've I'm not sure if I formed this, but if I didn't, I probably didn't. Uh, fracturing the wind doesn't match the stance. It's all, also the other hits are really that good. So your choice is probably either between Seismic Palm and Gaia Strategy. Seismic Palm feels like the one stance where you punch and move 
move a bit and you put in enemies down. You'll feel that because of the neutral combo. You feel like you're doing more knockdowns and Gaia strategy because of the uh, also because of the neutral combo. You're gonna feel like you're lifting enemies a lot more. That's how it goes. Gaia strategy has a bigger gap closer by holding block and pressing E. It feels like you can hit headshots more often with Gaia strategy too, so. It's kind of hard to tell you which one to go with. I think both are going to be really good. But it is really up to you. I have a build with Gaia Strategy and one with Seismic Palm. This is what I use to leveling. The other extra about the Furex is that it has a unique, com a unique mod. Combo duration, fire rate for secondary weapons and melee kills will give blast and, uh, to the enemies around. So that is another element for your condition overload, which is nice. But on its own, yeah. Not sure, depending on the build that you're using, not sure if this is worth a slot. I would say that... In, against armor at targets, you're probably gonna, not going to do anything, but because of the condition overload and stuff, eh, it might be worth it, but that's going to be up to you. This is the build I use for leveling, and uh, before I had the the perk that turns impact procs into slash. So this is a corrosive build. Does it work? Yeah, but now that we have slash procs, we're better off just going with viral. So instead of our... We'll take strike. We're gonna put Vistros Frost. We don't need this. This is not a build made for heavy attacks. Uh, ma it is kind of made for priming. So, what could I put here? I think the best thing I could put here is a Vena Grenier. Let's see something for light. Yeah, light attacks. Mm, probably gonna miss some attack speed here. Okay, Gaia's Tragedy is this. The f both stances, Gaia's Tragedy and Seismic Palm have impact procs on the neutral combos. Yeah, they're pretty pretty close to each other when it comes to that. But that hit, that initial hit from above, feels like you can hit the headshots a little bit easier with Gaia's Tragedy. Also, the gap closer. It is just... It's, yeah, 10 meters. I think it's, uh, covers a larger area than the Seismic Palm one. Start smashing. Let's get on Carn form. That was a heavy attack. Here we got our uh, Blast Proc here. As I was saying, you can see that we're gonna be lifting enemies quite a bit because of that mid combo lift is why we feel like guy strategy is gonna lift enemies <laughs> more than a seismic calm but there is also the knockdown on the strategy uh, it doesn't look anything too crazy like this and uh but it packs a punch Just decent, just decent. If, uh, probably with it, the same build, the uh, Teco Prime would perform better. But that's when we have to make use of the the new tools that we have. And uh, I didn't even prime the, the enemies. Prime. Once primed, the damage goes way up. But priming, it, it's what priming do, right? That's what priming does. Let's remake this build. Let's keep that. This one, remove body count. Okay. We want the critical. So let's put our blood rush. Weeping wounds is gonna put us on a decent status chance. 
uh, getting our impact. It's not gonna be no problem getting our impact. I do have our Raven, but I'm gonna save that for later. Reflex Coil. Relentless combination. What else? What else could I use here? We're missing attack speed, so let's get Quickening. Which is gonna pair really well with Relentless Combination. The way to get a combo here, the easiest that I, want, that I can think of, is to get make the use of our AoEs. Or Slam Attacks that we have guaranteed. Uh, we have Slam Attacks with guaranteed impact procs on our stands. So, let's make use of that to generate our combo, because those are actually gonna some slash rocks and uh, we're gonna get our relentless combination to work just well with that. It's a bit easier if I'm not wrong to get uh, to generate combo with seismic bomb because the gap closer is is not as big as this one so yeah. Our hits are more deadly now, but it still feels a bit lacking. Look, look at that bullet jump. That sprint speed is also nice. And I lost the combo. Bruh. Yeah, I don't have anything for the combo counter right now. That's why it's going down so fast. For normal enemies, it just feels like there's too much lifting, knockbacks, but the damage is starts showing up and it's interesting. It's the old times where the... I think this had the... The finishers built into the combo too? Or was it just the sparing weapon? Yeah. Oh, you were wondering about the... <laughs> the fire stuff. This is your field of fire. Dealing ridiculous damage. Ah. Uh, why would they ever put this into this weapon? I have no idea. Yeah. The slash ticks with relentless combination are interesting. Uh, I don't feel like this is really that good. I didn't use any kind of priming, of course, but usually when a weapon is good, you can use the condition overload and even without anything too crazy going on, you are going to deal a good amount of damage. Let's put in this just to, just to see the difference if there's going to be a, anything too crazy. even just stop at one enemy yeah hard. if we get the slash rock with the heavy attack then I uh, probably be good if not, we're probably not good. Yeah, that's uh, that's not very really good to think about. That was a 200k slash proc if I saw right. Which is... Below average. 
course we're talking oh my god that was a million and yeah could it possibly have been a headshot i'm not sure how it would be so but it would it would jesus christ it would make sense because of the, how high the damage was I just couldn't see the hit on that one in the back. Could we potentially have a crazy multiplier that I'm not aware in fists? No, that wasn't anything crazy. But maybe get a headshot. Who knows? If that second hit was a headshot, that would probably be uh, pretty deadly. Uh, couldn't see that. Ah, because the procs are inconsistent, which is uh, on itself is already a problem. Another thing, talking about the looks, this thing looks hella good. Like, wow. 200k slash proc. Uh, the second one we didn't even got to see, but it was probably pretty powerful. Two hundred K, that's the average. Not hitting a headshot or anything like that. <sighs> what to say? What to say? Yeah, two hundred K is the average. I wouldn't call that not even close to powerful. In the field of fire. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's switch to the Riven build. And I think the Riven has a huge, a humongous, crazy impact on this one. What's different from these builds? Condition Overload, the Smite is there, Blood Rush is there, Whipping Wounds, the Riven. Attack Speed, Damage to Grenier, Critical Damage, Finisher Damage. I could take off the Damage to Grenier. The, I could take this mod out. But I just don't know what I would put... Instead of this, I could go with more status chance, maybe. Could trade these, then take this off and put something like melee prowess. Or I could just go with the body count to increase the that and uh, to help with, you know, uh, condition overload. But, yeah. These... Slash sticks with this ribbon, they just become deadly. Oh, and now we have a. Now we have a. Seasonic bomb. How is the gap closer? See the gap closer? 8 meters. The other one is 10 meters. Yeah. The other one is 10 meters. It's. Yeah. It just feels like the other one is goes much further away. I don't know. Okay, so oh, this is just a holding block. Do this. Yeah. The only issue is that uh, I'm dealing like probably dealing not even close to what I should do when I speed a finisher. Oh, but then there is another question. Do ground finishers count as uh, finishers? That is just uh, really hard to say. Just crazy how much different difference a Riven makes. Look at that. That is not bad at all. That's double the usual damage that we're getting. And I don't have reflex spell this one. So. Did I left it? No. Yep. I lose my combo. No. Yep, lost. But because of that there is a some kind of a waves with seismic bomb. It just feels like it's a bit easier to do that. Yeah. 
230k. That was not a lot. I just like how this how seismic bomb sounds. Even if it doesn't deal as much damage as Gaia's strategy, which I don't know, it just sounds it sounds effective. It might not be effective, but it sounds effective. 230k. Yeah. Let me just show you guys how it is with the with the double bane, pretty much. Okay, simply using both uh, the bane and the ribbon, it feels like I have a an extra roar going on. Okay, let's see. Kill everyone, summon everyone again. And again, not even priming anything. I feel like the... I get more slash sticks out of the impact procs with the guy's strategy. I don't know. Might be a, something out of my mind. Get a slash. Come on. Yeah. I feel like before was 20k, now I'm getting like much more. Maybe, who knows. Just feels really effective now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was a 2 million slash thing. I was not expecting that, I have to say. The one thing I don't appreciate, as much as I like fist weapons and sparring weapons, is all of this eating. Like, why so much eating? It's just too much eating. Again. Field of Fire. Yeah. Let's take a look on the Tackle Prime. This is one of my. This is the one of the oldest primes I've had for uh, the craziest amount of time. Not the Tackle Prime, the, the normal Tackle. Because crit damage, crit chance. I mean, heat is not the best, but it was what I had as a stat stick for probably three years. I don't know. Since Cora released and she has stat sticks, that's what I've used on her. Not so sure how long ago that was, but I've just had the, the build just like this for the longest time. Blood Rush, Buzz Kill, um, do do do. Let's just change the prime. Am I using the ribbon? Yeah. So both had have a ribbon, so. It shouldn't be that crazy. This one is much more slow than the other one. This the, will not trigger, <laughs> you know, the the slash on a radial impact. So it's much slower. Also, I don't think I have anything for the attack speed. Because of the Riven, we get into the red crits. Even the... The slap. That was kind of crazy. I was trying to get like just a slash stick to show. Yeah. It just feels way more effective, but I lost the combo. Oh my god. Yeah. I like the tackle in general, but at the same time, it just feels like... I don't know. It's weird. If that Field of Fire was something 
better. I don't know. Maybe if the Field of Fire was really something that you could consider using. Or who knows, this thing could be even something like... When you punch, it releases a wave or something. Just, I don't know what it even could look like. Just to be more effective. I mean, now, now you you have the oldest... Uh, oldest fist weapon in the game to get an update. Which looks amazing. Uh, Field of Fire sucks. It eats enemies a lot. Uh, yeah. I am not particularly happy with this, but by what I just have heard, I didn't even saw the bow in Uh This was the best pick amongst the melee, as it's. It, it, that's what it sounds. But I would. If I still had the weapons to pick, I wouldn't pick this one. I seriously wouldn't pick this one. I mean, look at how damn good that looks, but... At the same time, it's so... Disappointing. Because it's... It's just clunky to use. Not that it's not powerful, not that it's not gonna deal damage. Not if you prime, it's not gonna kill, it's gonna delete stuff, you know? Because that's how it, that, how it works. It's, it's like, how... Pretty much everything works in this game. If you build it properly, if you prime it, everything is gonna kill. Enemies are just gonna die. And, uh, yeah. That's how it goes. That's just how it goes. Oh, another thing that we can, uh, can spread our, our impact proxies just like this. It might be, oh, it's probably much faster than, uh, what I was doing with this dance. Yeah. Eventually we get a good slash stick, but yeah, I'm not not sure what to tell you guys seriously. Like it is as usable now. <clears throat> let's let's start and and think on a conclusion for this. As I've said in other incarnate videos. The Incarnate Adapters, the Incarnate Genesis, they're always upgrades for the weapons. It doesn't mean that they're gonna become meta or that they're gonna be OP. It just means that they they got an update. They are better. That, I, I don't think there is a, a weapon that got, that have gotten an Incarnate Adapter and it got worse. Uh, Matrix was saying that the Paris was really inconsistent. In the, that, that might be the only... I haven't gotten it yet, so I, I can't really talk much about it, but that might be the only case. And what about the four times critical damage on the... on a slide attack? What do they expect us to do? Like... <laughs> things that I'll never understand. It is an upgrade. I am a bit disappointed with the Field of Fire. Because it's trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, we gave a weapon a special form with a unique attack that is completely trash. Okay, right. What am I gonna do about it? But. At the end of the day, that is something that I, I ended up not saying on the Strun video, is that even though they are not becoming made and stuff, as I said, they are getting better. They are, they're better versions of the weapons you we already got. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna be glad if you at least made a decent build for these, because at some point they're gonna pop into the circuit for you to use. And that's when you'll be glad to have them. That's just what I think. Leave it a like. Subscribe. Peace.